Hi, my name is Ken German, and I want to talk to you today about cost per view, which is a gold mine for cheap targeted traffic. Nobody really, really talks about it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that I'm teaching you about this. They're going to go, shh, you shouldn't tell them about this. But I want to help you as a network marketer, as a marketer, as a business owner, learn about how they're generating cheap targeted traffic that will help you accelerate the growth of your business and get you on the path to freedom. So let's talk about the two sources for internet traffic. You have free traffic, which is article marketing. Or an article marketing is where you write an article with a bunch of keywords in it, and then you get that article put out into syndication. And then when the search engines, you search on, people are searching on keywords, your article will pop up in front of them. They would read the article. Inside the article, they would click on your link for your lead capture page or your, or your website, and they would be driven back to your website to go view your content. Video marketing operates very much the same as article marketing, except our videos are usually typically about no more than three minutes long, and they're put out on YouTube or Vimeo or multiple sort of sites. And what they have is they have the keywords in the side of the video content. Like I said, when you post a video to YouTube, Google goes through the actual audio track of the video and indexes the keywords. And you'll notice this when you're actually you're uploading a, a video on YouTube, all of a sudden you're seeing all these keyword suggestions. The more and more it processes, Google is going through and indexing that, uh, uh, translating that audio track into text and then indexing that actual there. So it's very, very important that when you're creating a video for your business that's going to be a, a, for video marketing, that you have the keywords in the very beginning of the, the video. I'm not going to teach you today about article marketing and video marketing. There are thousands of, of courses out there. That's not the purpose of today. Now, organic traffic, and this is something that's important, you have to blog. Blogging is a very good way of you to helping you engage and attract uh, people to your website. And there's, and there's lots of uh, ways as far as strategies for the blogging. But you want to be posting a, a three to five article, about three to five articles a week on, on your blog so that you're going to be constantly changing and giving good content to people. Then we have paid traffic. Paid traffic, you've, uh, we've heard uh, pay-per-click, Google AdWords, Bing, Facebook, Yahoo, lots of, of uh, pay-per-click opportunities out there for generating traffic. Pay-per-click is typically like if, if you're going at, it's, it's typically it's, it's a 140 character roughly long text word that, that pops up on the right-hand side of your screen on your web browser uh, for, for Google AdWords or Bing or uh, Yahoo, Bing, Yahoo, same thing. Or Facebook has little uh, 100 by 100 or so size pictures that appear on your right-hand bar that attract your attention, and that's their, the way that they do it with, with Facebook. Okay. Banner ads. Banner ads is another way which we typically will, 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 will you get banner ads is you do what something called media buys. And not a lot of people talk about media buys, but the idea is with banner ads is that this is very, very good traffic for selling products especially with weight loss because weight loss is so competitive and you want to be able to get people to go out there and, and put your banners across multiple websites and get more traffic from that. So that media buys or banner ads is a very, very um, common way of getting uh, traffic out there and, and it puts the banner ads on sites like MS Spin, NBC or Fox News or, or just other websites that are subscribed to it that are actually part of a banner ad network or a media buy network. The one we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about today is cost per view. Cost per view uh, advertising or, or marketing is just totally awesome, and you're going to see why pretty soon about this. But the two providers that I recommend for cost per view are leadimpact.com and Traffic Vans. Most marketers will start off at leadimpact.com because it has a $200 entry uh, in order to be able to join Lead Impact and become a, a customer, and that's a $200 deposit, so you're not losing the money. For Traffic Vance, most people, will, when they get master of the lead impact, they'll upgrade to Traffic Vance because of just a, a, different, a different traffic source, from and, and, and Traffic Vance has a larger audience. Traffic Vance is a $1,000 deposit to get started, and you need to have somebody recommend you. That's the upgrade path. From lead impact, the people get started. Very good place to start. That's where I'm starting. Eventually, I will upgrade to Traffic Vance. Now, you're not going to hear this very often, and in fact, I'm actually the one who made this up, but it, this makes sense to me from the targeting perspective. You have two major groups to target when it comes to uh, characteristics for the people you want to target for your business. You have what I call brick and mortar people, people that use Facebook sparingly. They prefer to shop in retail stores in person. People that are technology challenged or what I call techno peasants. Now, techno peasants is a very kind word, but it just basically say people that are technology challenged. 
Generally, these types of people are the ones that use Internet Explorer, and they're going to default to the Bing browser. And this is important when I talk about this later on, because when we're generating the CPV campaigns. Number two is what I call the click and order people. People that live on Facebook, people that love to shop online, people that switch their browsers to Chrome or Firefox, which, what, they, what does Chrome and Firefox default to? Typically, it's going to default to, Chrome is going to default to Google, and Firefox is going to default to Yahoo, depending on whether you switch it or not. People are technology savvy in this particular uh, group, what, what I call the click and order people. Two very, very important uh, things to, uh, to understand as far as targeting. I can't stress this enough, and there aren't enough marketers out there that do this. They think that there's just some magic wand formula for making money online. There isn't. You have to do the basics for marketing. If you don't do it, you're just going to be flushing money down the toilet. So you want to be able to do the first three things in your business. Identify your who. Who are you going to help? What are the demographics? What's their age, their sex, their location, their interest? What are they, do, they like, do they like chocolate? You want to identify what they call the psychodemographics or psychographics. How are you going to help them? What services or products are you going to provide to them? How are you going to engage them? Number three, why? Why are you passionate about helping your target audience? What's your story? See, people don't buy products or services. People buy stories. They don't care what the product is. It could be whatever the product is, they believe your stories. And when they connect with your story, they go, ah, I want that product. Ah, I want that service because that person can help me. People buy stories. People don't buy products. There's no exception to this. If you don't want to do this, then don't come back and blame me later on. Well, Ken, I spent thousands of dollars because I didn't listen to you. I know. I've burned lots of Benjamins building my business. I'm trying to help you so you don't do that. So how do you target your audience? Facebook is your click and order people. Facebook has the best targeting mechanism of any platform for pay-per-click in the world, period. Why? Because Facebook lets you target by age, sex, interest, college. It has so many different characteristics that you can target your audience with that it's awesome. And I love Facebook marketing. And I love Facebook PPC. Bing PPC is click and order and brick and mortar, depending on which websites they're visiting. You'll notice that Google's not on this list for me because Google is just stupidly insane, from my opinion, on trying to have an average beginning a beginning marketer or a small business try to advertise on their network. It's it's just stupid because you got to maybe make you got to be spending at least four or five figures a month in order to make any any headway with 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 Google. And plus, Google keeps on changing the rules all the time when when they have a down quarter. It irritates the heck out of me. I will never buy ever ever run a Google. Well, maybe if I got a couple million dollars to burn. I might, but I, I just I don't encourage people starting out in the marketing to actually do Google AdWords. It's just it's just crazy. Anyway, CPV is for brick and mortar people. So those are the kind of targeting traffic. And this kind of helps you categorize on okay, what's my ideal client? What's my ideal business partner in my network marketing opportunity? This is the kind of things you're going to be looking for, the kind of traffic you want to be generating, and what and who do you want to be using to drive that paid traffic with? Okay, this little gem, cost per view, CPV, absolutely one of my favorite things, uh, favorite marketing techniques and our favorite uh, targeted traffic sources because it allows you to hijack other people's traffic. What? CPV, I'll explain this and I'll get back to that comment. CPV works where you go visit a, like a wildtangent.com or whatever, and you're, you're playing these free games. And inside that free game, there's a little plugin that goes in your browser that allows, that reports back to one of the CPV networks like Lead Impact or Traffic Vance of what websites you're visiting and what keywords you're entering into the browser. That data stream goes back to these providers, and based upon the data stream and whoever's bidding on the, uh, whoever's bidding for those keywords or those URLs. It's gonna, you're going to have search terms, and then once the search terms come up and then, oh, this person is searching on business opportunity, boom, and Ken's bidded this, Ken won the bid, we're going to pop your 800 by 600 ad in front of that person. And then when they click on that ad, it's going to go to a targeted URL 
the URL is visited, and the ad's initiated. So if your targeted URL, and let's say you're a chiropractor, right, and you have a joint pain CPV page, with CPV, you could target all of the chiropractors in your city with your CPV page. So if anybody visits that chiropractor, a competitor's chiropr chiropractic practice, you could put your ad up in front of them. So Joe Johnson's chiropractic and your, your, your Sally Johnson's chiropractic, you could go out there and you could put your CPV page in, in front of everybody who who's has that little browser plugin in, who's visiting that site anywhere in your city or anywhere in the world. So CPV allows you to hijack other people's traffic. Now, you as a business owner have to determine that that's what you want to do, but the idea is you want to be able to be more keyword focused than on your competitors because you're going for keywords typically or you're going for targeted URLs. I love CPV. So the CPV website setup is you have an 800 by 600. I prefer static HTML site. You can use Weebly. Do not use WordPress. And again, I prefer static HTML with, C C with the CSS because you, you want these CPV pages to respond in two seconds or less on a web browser. And the way that you test that once you get these set up is you go out to tools.pingdom.com and you enter your URL in there and you time it and see how fast it responds. Static HTML is the fastest because you can, with the, with the right technologies in place, and you can actually use a, a, something called a, a content delivery network called Cloudflare, which is free to actually get that, that, that to respond at, at less than two seconds around the globe. So depending on whether, what your, the scope of your business is, you can do, you really use some really cool technologies to help you really get these pages down. Most of mine, if not all my pages, respond in 500 milliseconds or less. Speed is very, very important. The structure of each CPV page is it has four pages. You have an index.html, which is the main content website. You have a thank you page. You have a terms of service page. And you have a privacy policy. The thank you page is when, you're, when you have your autoresponder and people, uh, and when they give you their contact information and they click on submit, that it's going to go to your autoresponder. Your autoresponder is going to send them to the thank you page. The thank you page is then going to direct them what they should be doing, and then they're going to get some sort, of, some sort of free gift, which is going to be sent to them by the autoresponder. I've tested GetResponse, MailChimp, iContact, almost every, every autoresponder out there. Nothing beats AWeber in my opinion. It's twenty dollars a month. It works, and 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 and, and, and doesn't and, and AWeber doesn't get rejected. You'll get like Mailchimp, and you'll be broadcasting out there, and Mailchimp gets flagged for spam a lot. So I know a lot of people like that because Mailchimp is free. But just spend the twenty dollars a month on AWeber and and grow with your business. So CPV page setup, eight hundred by six hundred static HTML site. You can use Weebly.com to create these CPV pages. Do not use WordPress. I prefer static HTML. It should respond in less than two seconds, preferably in one second, anywhere in the globe. So here are some examples of the CPV pages that my team created. This is a business opportunity CPV page, and this is one of the actual campaigns I'm using. Here's another business opportunity page that my web team is currently working on. I'm going to be split testing these, um, these uh, CPV pages to see which ones convert better. You have to, absolutely, absolutely, if you're not doing this and, and you don't know anything about conversion, you want to be tracking what your conversion rates are and what's going to convert best and what's going to get the most return on your investment. If you're not tracking these numbers in your business, you're going to, again, flushing money down the toilet. When you know what your conversion rates are on, on, your, on, on your websites or on, on, on your prospecting, you know where to spend your business and where to spend your money in the business and make the best return on your investment. Here's a weight loss one. Again, it's generically put together. My web team is currently working on this page. Again, this is the joint pain example. Um, I have doctors on my team and chiropractors on my team that I'm going to be help generating leads for them to help them grow their practice and help them implement the weight loss and wellness into their practices to help them improve the quality of care they give to their patients or clients and create multiple streams of income. Anti-aging, here's an anti-aging example. Again, this is my web design team is currently working on this, but I wanted to just give you some examples of what these pages look like. So we're going to talk about the CPV campaign setup. Depending upon what's your budget, you, you have the very bare minimum I recommend is, is $5 a day. Because when you're doing the optimization on $5 a day, you're probably going to generate about one lead a day. Okay? 
You do ten dollars a day. You're gonna probably generate up to two to three leads a day. Your goal in the initial setup of this is not to go hog wild and waste a ton of money. Your goal is optimization. Now I said, which was a mistake on here, well, that's fine. You want to use five search engines to find your, find your keywords or URL targets for your campaigns. The reason you want to do this is because each search engine has a different audience that uses that search engine, and that's going to help you get a wider, wider variety of people that you're going to be marketing to to attract them to your business and get them to come into your business or sell your, or, 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 or sell your products to. Google tends to be more intellectual people. Yahoo, Bing tends to be more uh, more average blue collar workers. White collar tends to be more the Google people and Ask.com and About.com are typically people that are visiting those sites because their browser got hijacked by some malware or some um, file that they were downloading and, and then they get they get stuck with those Ask.com or About.com as their default uh, search engines. You want to pick four to five targeted micro niches within your campaign. So an example is if you're going to have like business opportunity in your CPV campaign, you want to pick four to five targeted micro niches in your campaign. In those micro niche campaigns, you want to have 25 to 30 keywords targeted for your targeted world URLs or your keywords. You don't want to have thousands of keywords to manage. This type of a strategy or this type of organization can be used with Bing PPC or or even Facebook PPC, and it's recommended because you simply want to you don't want to be burning a lot of money on your campaigns, but you also want to keep it so it's very very easy to manage, and you might be able to turn off those niches off and on easily depending upon what kind of traffic you want for your business. And we'll get into that here in a minute. So here's an example of what it looks like in leadimpact.com, and this is actually one of the campaigns I created. I'm doing about $10 a day because that's what my coach had recommended I do. I was doing $5 a day earlier, and I wasn't getting very good results. So I'm going to be spending about, now you say, well, that's $300 a month. Well, no, I only run my campaigns on CPV because you can schedule this in the actual campaign. I only run them Monday through Friday, and I, and I have them basically running Monday through Friday, 8 to about 7 p.m. Eastern time because... I want to be able to be responding to those ads or what those people are opting into my pages or buying products within about five to ten minutes. It's very, very important that when you're setting these up that you want to be able to respond to those people quickly. Now, if you if you're, if you're, you don't have the, the fortune, of, uh, uh, if you're not able to respond to those quickly, then you have, kind of have to visit what you're going to do for your strategy. But the idea is you want to be responding to those leads that are coming into your business within five to ten minutes. And MIT actually did a study on this. So again, here's the, uh, here's the campaign setup. I've got a business opportunity campaign set up. I've got a weight loss campaign, which I'm currently working on. And here's what, the, what I'm saying, the micro niches within the campaign. So BizOp, I have BizOp. When people want to learn something, they go out and, and they try to find books about it. So with the business opportunity, as an example, I have URLs in that campaign that are targeting Amazon.com. So when somebody does a, a search on how to create a home business on Amazon, I have the books listed on there, and, and when people go click on the go click on the actual uh, book, my ad will pop up in front of them. Really cool technology, really cool opportunity. Get an 800 by 600 banner ad that pops up in front of them on their screen, and the ad blockers won't block it because they've given their, their browser permission to pop those ads up in front of them when they installed the plugin. And as you can see, in my particular opportunity, I'm target, targeting education, home biz. I'm also targeting other MLMs. I'm targeting other MLMs because a lot of people are disgruntled with, the, with, the, with their leadership team that brought them into the business, and they're looking for better results. So that's another opportunity for you to, help, to basically get people interested in, in you and show the leadership and how, you, how you're different from what is being offered. Now, I broke the rules on the business opportunity MLM one because I got, got a little bit crazy, but I'm going to be eliminating those keywords, and I'll get it down between the 25 and 30 that I'm supposed to. But again, this is just an opportunity uh, to just see how you create the, what I call the micro niches within a campaign. The overall budget for the entire campaign is set to $10. You could create separate campaigns, which I'm not currently doing. In the future, I might do that, but anyway. The idea is that I want to keep everything organized, easy to manage, because we'll, we'll talk about this here in a minute. Again, and I broke this down a little bit more to give you an example. When you when you have a keywords and URLs, I said when, when somebody visits toworkathome.com, there's a chance that based upon what my bidding is, that they'll be able to see my, 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 my uh, CPV page for my business opportunity. 
Now I haven't done anything with the bidding yet because the, the keywords just got approved on this, but you'll see on the right hand side what the other bids are. So what you're doing in this particular case is that you want to you don't want to be able to you don't want to bid a little bit more than everybody else is, and the the, the number that's on the left hand side is what you're going to be bidding to be a little bit. So let's say we'll take two work at home.com. You're going to bid 0.34 in order to get your ad to pop up. You're always going to be bidding one a little bit higher than the other. So, but no matter how you slice this, this is cheap traffic, and it's cheap targeted traffic. Optimization. Once the keywords for your campaign are approved, disable all but one of the micro niche campaigns in your CPV campaign. Your goal is to get one of those campaigns generating leads for you and then once it's generating leads you want to get it so that each of the keywords in that campaign are generating 75 to 100 impressions per day for each keyword or targeted URL before eliminating any key keywords. So give it about two weeks of running before you start eliminating keywords. Don't worry, you don't need that many keywords to be able to start generating up to 30 to 40, 50 leads a day. As soon as you ger start generating an, uh, maybe anywhere from one to three leads a day consistently, at that point in time, it's just a matter of adding more money to your ca campaign and increasing your budget. CPV, you can be very, very easily generating 30 to 50 leads per day per micro niche. Per micro niche. So if you have four to five micro niches within your business opportunity, that means you could be generating 200 leads a day. That's a lot of leads. So once your micro niche is generating us about three to five leads per day, you know that you have the campaign optimized, and then you can turn it off and move to the next campaign. Or if you want to, you could just leave this generating leads and get some and get some other stuff going. The idea is that you want to get it so it's generating enough enough leads so you can get those leads to to go into conversation. Everybody forgets about conversations. Well, I want to generate all these leads. Well, yeah, but your whole goal is to generate conversations. You want to get those you want to get those people to answer the phone. So one of the tricks when you're generating leads is you have to you have to figure out how many leads you're going to be able to have to generate each day in order to generate enough conversations to build your business. Because if you're not talking to people and people aren't answering their phone, what good does a lead do? They're just garbage leads at that point in time. So at this point, the number of leads per day is just going to be dependent upon the niche that you're targeting and the cost is going to be dependent on the niche you're targeting. An example with CPV leads per day is about $1.80 about $1 per lead or $2 per lead depending upon uh, that's that's about a 20 cent flux between there, but that's generally for business opportunity leads doing CPV. It's a dollar 80 to two dollars per lead, and they're targeted leads. They're not junk leads that you buy online. These are targeted leads that you created from these campaigns. Weight loss leads, I'm told, and I, I haven't done this yet, but my coach is telling me that they can go for as much as six dollars per lead per CPV, because that's just a huge billion dollar, you know, 70 some odd billion dollar market, and there's so many people competing for that traffic. So here's the strategy, and this is why I'm, I, I was just, I had some huge problems with my CPV campaign organization. Earlier, my coach looked at me and kind of slapped me upside the head and said, Ken, you didn't listen to me. Okay, fine. I'll do it your way now. So I created this strategy because my goal for my business is to build my business my way with the kinds of people I want to work with in my business. With targeted lead generation campaigns set up this way, you can flip one campaign off or on depending on the kinds of leads that you want for your business or your network marketing team. I'm not going to get too much into my strategy because I'm not giving that away, but the idea is that you can actually turn campaigns off and on depending on what kind of people you want to attract. So if you need more people in the weight loss to, to, to fill some slots in your, into your business and when your network marketing opportunity, you turn the weight loss campaign on. You always keep the budget to be the same. You just flip the, tra the traffic off and on depending on which people you want to attract to your business. You need more, you need more people that are more uh, beauty consultants or more, you, know, do you need more product sales. You have complete control of the destiny of your business when you have targeted lead campaigns. You no longer have to chase after friends and family or be a member of the NFL club. No friends left. So once you have the leads, so many systems I have investigated on the internet don't teach you this, and it is a huge crime. Huge, huge. You need to develop four primary skills in your business. How to prospect, how to present your opportunity, how to close them into a product sale, or how to ask them for a sale. Most people are get really, really shy when they're having to ask for the sale, and, and, they, and they, 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 get, they start pointing fingers. Well, I didn't get this because of what, because, no, no, no. It's because you didn't learn these skills. And the most, most important skill that you can learn in your business is how to listen. 
when you're prospecting, it's 80% listening and 20% of you asking empowering questions. You want to be opening up and prospecting so that you're getting them to share their pain with you. Because your goal in this in your business is not to try and sell them something, not to be a shop consultant. Your your opportunity is to position yourself as a solution provider so you can solve their pain. With these four skills and tar with targeted lead generation systems, learning the prospecting, the presenting, and the closing, and getting your prospecting and closing so you're at least a 40% plus closure rate uh, when you're talking to leads, you can generate four or five or even six figures a month in your network marketing opportunity. You increase the power of these systems by designing them to be duplicatable. What do I mean? It means you can give these systems to your team and duplicate your success so you can get to the point where your, your, your team is sponsoring network marketing 300 people a month. It's all about duplication. I'm spelling that wrong. I'm spelling it the way on purpose. So do it your way, flush the money down the toilet. Do it my way, start planning your retirement party. Thank you very, very much. My name is Ken German. I'm an online and mobile marketing consultant. And I specialize in people help, helping people create successful home-based businesses. And I work with health and wellness professionals to help them improve the quality of care they give to their, their patients or clients and then create multiple streams of income. Have an awesome night.